and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on. We have some mono red crisis. We're going to play this deck one last time here before Corset 2020 enters the format next week. Uh, so, you know, we're kind of going through, uh, going back through some of uh, the favorite decks, some of the decks that we've had a lot of success with. And this, this mono red crisis deck has just been kind of unheralded and unheralded, I guess that's a D, not a T, but um, it's been under the radar and just kind of sneaky good. W whenever we've played this over in ranked, we're just like consistently going like 4-1 with the deck basically and just kind of always doing pretty well with it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and give it one last try here. We're probably going to play about four matches. I think maybe we'll do four matches here for Krasis, four matches for Gruul Midrange. Um, you know, with the first two leagues took a little while. Uh, so that's I think that's the plan here. But yeah, so basically what this deck is, if you haven't seen it before, it is a mono red midrange deck. That mono red has uh, a good removal with like shock, coil, strike, and it has good mid game with chain whirler, phoenix, especially chain whirler. Like this card's just so good, right? So this is good in like a mid range deck also. It's just such a good card. But Mono Red really struggled with the top end, and so that's why, and like finishing the games out. And that's where Krasis comes into play. It allows us to gain life, which Red, you know, doesn't really gain life, but it allows us to gain life, draw a lot of cards, and get a big trampler um, in there. So we got our treasure maps to, to help find Krasis, help get a lot of mana for the Krasis. Uh, with this metagame, we have Immortal Suns and Star of Extinctions in the deck, which we haven't really had before. But there's just Planeswalkers everywhere, right? And so we're, we're going with a couple of Immortal Suns to help against all these Planeswalker decks. And then we have uh, this Star of Extinction that just can be a reset button, especially against all these Nissa decks, making all their lands into creatures and all the mana creatures, everything. You just want to blow everything up. Um, and so that's why we got these Star of Extinctions in here. All right, so let's give it a try. Mono Red Krasis. So we'll head on over to... Mythic here. I don't know where I'm at. I'm somewhere in the percents. I'm not sure what percent. 97 percent. Didn't know what the what the fall off would be from the last time we played ranked. I think we we're at like finished at like 99 percent the last time we played ranked. So it looks like we fell off a couple. All right. Well, we got treasure map, so we're keeping. All right, looks like, looks like the feather deck. Well, we don't have a good hand for the feather deck, of course. With what we got here, but maybe we'll find some stuff. Prepare for battle. Looking for a shock, coil, or strike. We got 11 of those. So are going to be a little slow. Are you going to be a little slow? So I won't play it this turn. Next turn, no. The next turn after that, no. But the third turn, when we flip treasure map, I could play Star of Extinction then. That's probably too slow. Hmm. I mean, I would prefer it over just another land here. Your light will cleave the darkness. Ugh, getting beat up by the aggro deck with all top end in hand. Maybe I should have kept that Star of Extinction. Wow. Because I'd be able to cast Star next turn. I 
I'll just have to survive here this turn. Share in my light. Oh yeah, very good chance I'm dead. I mean, I even if I'm not dead this combat, I'm I'm not going to survive the the following combat. All right, get this extra coil in here. Cut these immortal suns. We'll get another star. Or should I get a dragon? No, I want another star. All right. I guess I could get rid of some... No, Daredevil's probably okay. Just need to draw a little better and not just have only Krasis's. We need to actually have our removal spells. Yeah, you're right, B B Golem. I did add one one too many and another turn whenever I was talking about it. Cause yeah, it was just it wasn't that turn and it wasn't the next turn, but it was the turn after we were gonna be able to play it. So it would have been turn five. We could have Starve Extinction on turn five, but we were dead before that, as we saw there. We died on our turn four. I'll just take my draw step here. I have more information with the scry. It's not like I need, like, absolutely need to find something that, that turn. Yeah. I do want to keep scrying, so. We'll go Chain Whirler instead of Phoenix. Rude. Keeping the land, one more land, we can crace this for four. Hey, flat dude, yeah, I am having a good day. Thanks. Ugh. Not good. All right, draw land. Yay. So I can Daredevil Coil. Yeah, Gideon's really strong. I like Gideon quite a bit. Quite a bit. Kinship ensures our victory. 
We still need you. Why didn't I shock anything? Because if I would have drawn a land, I would have just starved extinctioned away their two things and destroyed a land, but we didn't draw a land. That's why I didn't shock anything last turn. It's because of star. Well, that's not drawing the land. Just went ahead and got rid of that. 10th District Legionnaire, because that thing's really scary. Deliver us to victory. Bleh. So I can I can Daredevil and Domri's Ambush and kill a Johnny with Domri's Ambush. Or I just play the Phoenix. So I'm debating between. The question is, wouldn't using your Dire Fleet to Lava Coil the creature and then shocking a Johnny be the better play? That just that takes out everything in my hand, and basically doing that play basically makes my Star of Extinction very very bad, and I don't want to make my Star of Extinction very very bad. That's why I didn't. I don't want to just use all my other resources to get ahead on the battlefield when I'm playing Star of Extinction here. Strength is born. Come on, draw the land. Finally. It had been so many draws since we had drawn a land. It was like our Krasis didn't. You know, we cast that Krasis for, to draw two and then like three other draws after that. Finally got there. All right. Farewell. Stop. Together? We are unstoppable. Back on your feet. not strong enough. Looks like we could be dead now. This guy to the bottom. We draw draw a crisis. All right, well, we're not dead yet. Can my opponent just draw lands? Like, why do they just have to have, like, all spells? Like, so many spells. Can't they draw some lands? So they can cast Reckless Rage to kill Chain Whirler. I'd like my opponent to draw some lands. I've drawn five. Five lands and 20 cards. That's like pretty perfect. Let's 
pretty perfect. The Arcanist can't get anything right now. What is the best three drop green mana creature? Uh, Kiora. Yeah, Kiora. Uh, if it has to be specifically a creature, then uh, the legendary elf. Not Mowu. What are, I can't picture the name right now, but the legendary elf. Marwin. Marwin. That's it. It's Marwin. Does Fiery Cannonade seem like something I want? No. Well, Steel Leaf's not a mana creature. I think the question was a mana creature. Yeah, Ziet. Yeah, Elder Spells are good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely like some Elder Spells. So why did I shoot the, the Arcanist before Draw Step so that they couldn't get a shot at Sheltering Light? Because... Sheltering Light doesn't matter at that point. Shooting them was more important because they're at 11. Shooting the creature was like the last case, was like, you know, last case scenario, like if I needed to. But I was going to shoot them to put them down to 7 and then attack them for lethal the next turn. You know, I wanted to kill them the very next turn, but we just, we didn't need to kill that 1-3. Um, so yeah, I was wanting to kill... them what is going on here do i just get a million cards or something is this just my opening hand is this is this what's going on If I want to play this Rootbound Crag, can I? What is going on here? Can I play the Steam Vents? No? It won't let me? Has anybody seen this before? Yeah, is this the London Mulligan rule? I think this is the London Mulligan roll. What if I want to play with this Rootbound Crag? I just can't. I guess I'll play this one over here. I 
It is a visual bug. These cards aren't in my hand. The cards, like, from the Arch of Araska to the right are the cards in my hand. Right now. Oh wait, oh I, I don't have the war, okay, so the war boss is not in my hand, but I think that's in my hand. I'm gonna have to keep these separated. I was gonna play the war boss here, but it's not in my hand. I'm gonna need to discard four cards? No, nope, I guess I don't. This is crazy. No friend of mine fights alone. See in yourself what I see in you. So war boss on over are not actually cards in my hand. They're in my deck because yeah, it's fifty, which is correct. Like these, this is just a visual thing from war boss on over. All right, that's game. Arcanist with the Johnny is pretty messed up. You are capable Gotta draw a Star of Extinction. And some more lands. Yeah, I mulled my hand because I didn't have any removal in it, but then my mulligan tan didn't have any removal either. Uh, but I didn't want to go down to five, you know, like we just had a bunch of phoenixes and stuff. But not having any of our 12 removal spells in... Or 12 early removal spells in either hand is a bummer. So this this hand over here was the first hand that I mulliganed away. You can see it was like, you know, like War Boss, Star of Extinction, a bunch of lands. And a, a Krasis. We mulligan that away. And this was the other one. Oh, this hand was good. I could have had both hands there and I was losing. We really have been playing a lot of Feather today and yesterday. Yesterday and today I've been playing against so much Feather. I'm not sure why it's it's only really popular, but and they just always have feather early. It's not you know like we're playing against a lot of feather, and there's they don't have hands that don't have feather. Is it the new mono blue? Maybe we're kind of playing it about the same amount that we played mono blue before. Yeah, maybe it's the new mono blue. It's a good. Those two decks are a, a pretty. Good comparison there. Okay, new match. We are O and one. All right, the regular red deck. And we have a regular looking hand. Everything's regular. So can't, unfortunately I just got a Lava Coil there, can't really let them light up the stage. 
efficiently. Same. I would like to be playing this treasure map, but gotta be killing their things. Feel bad for using the lightning strike on the 2 1 now, since we drew Chain Whirler. It would have been nice to be able to just, if I just didn't cast it and then lightning strike the Chain Whirler. But yeah, as I was, I was definitely trying to prevent that light at the stage, though, of course. Oh, I agree with you there, Tree Fitty. It, that's a good point. I hadn't really placed it, but now that you say it, yeah, it definitely feels like that. That like the the opponents that we play with that are playing Feather are play very slowly. Cause yeah, that those games did take very long. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Yeah, I knew there was there was something that that like drained me more than normal that I wasn't I couldn't quite place it but yeah once you bring that up I guess this is better than a random card What am I supposed to do with this next turn? Is going to help me dig for Frenzy? Or sorry, dig for Krasis? I mean, we're, we're just very dead here. To frenzy, I don't have any enchantment removal in the main deck. We need to find like we need to draw like crisis into crisis into crisis. I guess I should have a stop on my upkeep for that. Not crisis. Still not crisis. So all I need is a three damage burn spell and I'm dead. The Hellkite can shoot both of these pyromancers. All right, cannonades, another coil, uh, the demanding dragon, and some cinder vines to blow up frenzies. And we're taking out sun and star. 
and we're taking out treasure map. It's just too slow for us. Um, this leaves us with 62. Okay, so we'll go three Cindervine. And honestly, Rekindling Phoenix doesn't really match up very well in this matchup, to be honest. Yeah, so I'm going to trim one Phoenix. No, I hadn't seen that new RRR dragon. Yeah, they'll, pro they'll probably have Chandra's in their deck. Gross. Well, this is pretty bad. We have two lands, a Dire Fleet Daredevil, and then four drop, four, four drop, five drop, four drop. This is not good at all. Ah, uh, not our day today with this deck. Pyromancer is a great card. No, so I didn't see that. That's pretty ridiculous. So they can go Daredevil plus Strike Me or cast the, or sorry, Daredevil plus Shock Me or cast the Strike. Looks like they're going Daredevil, what? Daredevil Cannonade? What? Or they just want to play the Daredevil and the Strike, okay. No, Cannonade does not kill Daredevil. Daredevil's a pirate. This is non-pirate creatures. Hoping to draw the fifth mana here, of course, and slam down a demanding dragon. Can't really play the shock land. This is my deck, JJ.
All right, let's try again. All right, we got land drops. I like that. Especially after mulliganing to five, I like having some land drops. Hopefully this is a Planeswalker heavy deck. Treasure map's awesome. That'll get us to a Moral Sun faster. It is not. It's another aggro deck. And today is just mono aggro decks. I think this is like my last six matches have been against an aggro deck, I think. Something close to that. I was considering double shocking the Thorn Lieutenant, gives them a couple 1 1s, but then I kill the 1 1s with the Chain Whirler. But the two shocks are probably going to be more valuable with something else than than the Thorn Lieutenant. I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Maybe I should have done that. Lightning Strike is kind of good here, but I, I want land. Oh, yeah, last turn I could have just done the one shock with Chain Whirler, but then I would not have been able to activate the treasure map if I would have done that. But yeah, I could have done that, but I'm sorry. I just want to be activating treasure maps, though. Get to more mana. That thing's scary. Why would you tap the treasure cove immediately, Dick? Why the treasure cove? So Thorn Lieutenant, if I don't block, turns into a So we'll see if this pays out. The easy play is just play the Phoenix and scry with the treasure map, draw another card with this treasure cove. But I, instead of doing the scry and the draw, I'm just getting the Immortal Sun in play, growing my creature. Um... And I'm going to start drawing multiple cards a turn with the Immortal Sun. Let's get an upkeep stop in.
<laughs> okay, well, fair game, fair game. All right, we have an Immortal Sun battle. Let's just draw some cards. Let's see what we get. Uh, with gold, you can either enter, you can enter the events like the, the. There's a best of one and a traditional constructed event. You can draft if you're looking for new cards. That's an option as well. Or uh, so just giving a plus one. Of course, they can't activate the Domri for like multiple sun reasons. Um, or you can purchase booster packs also. That's those are your options there. Thanks, bad there. So yeah, so new player guide recommends playing constructed events with gold to build cards. Okay. Yeah, not a bad option there. All right, another coil, another dragon. If you don't daredevil here, they do play some, they will have some strikes and coils, but not a ton. I want a star, so maybe I'll just go this way. I think I do want to treasure map. Go like this. Maybe I should be cutting one immortal sun. I'm just playing one. I could also just be playing zero immortal suns, to be honest. Like maybe I just take out immortal sun in this matchup. <laughs> yeah, no, this this deck's pretty good. Um, yeah, our win loss record not you know not good right now, but the last like three or four times I've played this deck, I've gone like four one every time. So it, it was due for um, you know and and all those in ranked also. Um, so it was, it was probably due for uh, you know a poor run or a below average run, I guess. Yes, I would recommend having a, a decent deck with the events with the gold because yeah, if you if you don't have a good deck and you're just losing, it's better to be buying packs with your gold. Yeah, I think this is the I think ninety four percent is the lowest I've ever been, and you know the. Like in any month, not just like this month. But that's okay. How much time does this season have left? Like five days or so? We can get we'll get back in the top thousand. Good start. Turn one elf, turn two Domri. That's a good start. Shock here a little late. Just a tad late. They already got their Domri in play. Yeah, I've qualified all the seasons. Oh, I wish you could see your face while I'm beating you. That thing's too big. I'm 
sorry. Were you doing something? I mean, if they have anything else, we're certainly dead. We can, you know, maybe try to like jump block up their odds a bunch, I suppose. It's not a not a good plan. That's the only plan I got. Of course, if they have any removal, they get to, they get to fight with the Domri to kill the Phoenix once. And then can use any other removal spell to kill it. Clearly, they may just have coil. So I don't I don't have an out here because of Domri Ferox. I don't. There's nothing in my deck that saves me. Because like all I can do is play a blocker, and they they fight and kill the blocker. Let's get another Star of Extinction in here. Let's play three of those. Um, D, I don't know the, I don't know exactly what the cards do. I don't, I've looked at like some of the cards and stuff, but I don't, I don't have them. I don't have I don't know them well enough that just saying the names of the cards I know what they do and everything so I I don't know what Nightpack ambushed and Shifting Ceratops I don't honestly know what those cards do I think Shifting Ceratops I think that's four mana five four green thing that's pro blue I think I don't know. Friday, like it's, like we said here, like Friday, we're really going to be going through all the cards from the set and talking about them and and going through each and every card and and really going through of like how it could be used in standard and everything like that. Um, but that Ceratops, I think, if, if that's what that is, the five mana or four mana five four pro blue card, it can't be countered, something like that. I I'm not super thrilled about that card right now. All right, I'm basically taking two life so I can kill a turn one land or elf. Because that's so important. Yeah, the, yep, the set review will be recorded for YouTube. Everything I do goes up to the YouTube channel as well. Everything I do on stream. So yeah, it'll be a good time. I'm starting early because you know we are talking through our, every card in the whole set, uh, like last time. So we're starting early, so we have an, more time. Hopefully, a nine-hour stream with that will give us enough time. I should have waited. I don't know if they're gonna ha haste or or not this thing. I'm gonna keep this though. We'll see what they do. Yeah, they went 4-4. Four, four. Well, my plan blew up. And I killed that thing anyway. I was like, oh, I'm going to block and shock. But the block and shock doesn't work against the spellbreaker that has hexproof. Missed a land drop, okay. Speaking of land drops, I want those. So I take hit one more hit this turn and then Star of Extinction next turn? Or do I Demanding Dragon? Because I kind of want to wait till after Star of Extinction to Demanding Dragon. To seeing you running away. No, not really, Elk. But I. Somebody said that, that shock I is in the set. Is chaos. A 
If that other land was a blue, I was even thinking that if that other land was a blue land, I would have kept it. But with it just being the basic mountain, I got rid of it. But it did mean that we had to use a treasure if we weren't drawing a land. That's unfortunate. I wish you could see your face while I'm beating you. I, I don't believe Lyra got reprinted. Yeah, we won't answer to other guilds. No, I don't, no, I don't think so. Okay, so there's just no mana over here. Yeah, if, sh if shock gets reprinted and you have the shock card style like this, I don't think you'll have the shock card style for the new set, but you'd still be able to use your M19 shock in standard, because if any shock is legal in standard, they're all legal in standard kind of thing. Oh my gosh. There's just no lands over here. Really wish I would have kept that that seventh land a little bit ago. I just want to draw. I just want to draw a star. I just want to draw a land for star of extinction. Now it's just kind of too late. What's the point? Yeah, Rotting Register looks looks really cool. Finally. So they'll get to draw a card. They won't have any green mana left. And it looks like we got this. Especially how they don't they don't have a coil. Okay, I was gonna I was gonna go ahead and use a treasure here for the other Phoenix. We saw the power of treasure map that game, helping us ramp, get a lot of mana. Then we start Star of Extinctioning. 
Yeah, Star of Extinction destroying dinos. That's that's some good flavor right there. <laughs> Hang in there, egg. <laughs> I forgot about emergency powers. That's, that's a neat. That's a neat card. That card's really neat with Narset. How you draw seven, but your opponent doesn't draw seven. Yeah, that card's cool. Is this like green white tokens? It is looking like a green white token deck. Forgot the Raptor has vigilance. Please no venerate Luxodon. Okay. You think Kuali's Raptor was a really underrated card? I'm kind of the opposite. I actually think this card was just pretty overrated. I don't think it's very good. Which I wish it was better. You know, I really like green-white. You know, it's gr it's a green-white Two three with vigilance dinosaur. I mean that's the that's the kind of card I want to pl be playing. But ETB proliferate from your two drop that you're trying to play early. I wish it had like you know some some other time proliferate or something. I don't know exactly how it works, but I will teach you humility. the cards in standard are really good. And unfortunately, that one's not quite there. I've suffered worse. Doesn't really seem like my opponent's playing any instants and sorceries. I'll just play out this daredevil here. Turn back while you still can. Ooh, whenever it dies, proliferate. Maybe, like, whenever it gets a count, like, whenever this card gets a counter, then proliferate. You put a counter on it, you're really putting two. We have to be a little worried of March of the Multitudes, I guess. I don't know that would be that would be really sweet. Then you like play your Johnny, put a counter on it, start proliferating. That'd be a pretty sweet card right there.
Or maybe just when it ETBs and when it dies, proliferate. Maybe both. I don't I don't think that would make it too strong if it just also had whenever it dies proliferate on there. Alright, we got some elf knights. Elf knights are pretty cool. We're gonna cannonade, we're gonna star. We're gonna take out daredevils. We're gonna trim. Take out one sun. And take out like shock and strike. I think we can change I think and like shock strike coil. I think we can trim these kind of cards. Um, you know, with having extra cannonades and stars in. I take out a couple shot. Actually, I don't know. Like, all we saw were, like, X3s, basically. I just take out shocks. Get in, uh, Cinder Vines for their Conclave Tribunals. Maybe two Cinder Vines. And get this coil in. Yeah, this deck could this could be a good deck for Chandra, you know, move away, move back away from Immortal Sun, um, and like for the course at twenty twenty Chandras, you know, this this could be like Chandra Tribal, you know, with Krasis and stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, our opponent's on another mulligan to five. They mulled to five last game, too. So it feels bad. How does reverberation How work goes, with double cast? Tear it down. Tear it all down. Honestly, I don't really know. <laughs> I, I don't really know how that how it all work. Yeah, I'm not sure to be honest. Uh, not again. So yeah, maybe you get your because double cast says you get two of them, and then you copy that twice, so you get, so you get, yeah, it sounds like you would get six copies of the next thing. Math kind of checks out there. But of course, you already spent six mana to cast your double cast and your reverberation, so you have to have like another spell on top of that. To light the way, I will. Another scar, another memory. Not that I know of, Elysia. Now do you see the benefits of peace?
Alright, this game's looking pretty good for us. Now do you see the benefits of peace? Attack. I will return and with more by my side. Hmm. So the center vines can blow up the Conclave Tribunal at any time if they have like a march of the multitudes. Two, four, six, eight. Alright, so if I get my Chain Whirler back, we do two to them, put them down to 11, we can attack for 7. Plus the Chain Whirler does an extra point, then our Lightning Strike, so this should be lethal. Right, so that comes in, that puts it down to 10. Attack for 7, Lightning Strike for the other 3. All right, two and two. Let's do, yeah, I guess, yeah, we could have blown up the tribunal in response to the crisis. Yeah, that's true, and, not, and keep the crisis from being exiled. I was doing the math on the other one though and realized it was lethal, so I guess they're, I guess it was lethal either way. Yeah, our opponent mold the five, both games, unfortunately. Um. So we're going to play one more here to break the tie. Hopefully move this up to a 3-2. This is the third person that's started out with Thorn Lieutenants against us. Lost to the Gruel deck last time, so we'll see if we get our revenge. Right? Or no, did we beat the Gruel deck? Never mind, we beat the Gruel deck. That's the card, though. Drawing the second Chain Whirler could be really good if they don't have removal. Two Chain Whirlers can shut down a Ferox. Playing the deck that I'm playing next. <laughs> Looks like they're just playing my Gruel Midrange that I was going to be playing next. I wish I had one more mana. Yeah, 
Yeah, like this this is just the gruel mid-range deck that I'm about to play. That deck matches up very, very, very well against red removal, as we saw with that game. I do not like my chances here. I do not like my chances here. Yeah, Gruul Arcbow there. That's what I was going to play up next, was I was going to try Gruul Arcbow without Arcbow. That's what I was calling it Gruul Midrange. Try replacing Arcbow with Kiora. But yeah, like... Vegan Lot's got my deck here. So, can't be upset. Lose into my own deck. It's a sweet deck. And I'm glad glad they're playing it. I don't know which card I'm most excited for in M20 yet. Like, we'll kind of talk talk that through whenever we go through the set review on Friday and everything. Um, while I've been like, you know, seeing the cards and everything, I haven't really been processing them too much. You know, I'm still playing the standard format and everything that I have here, so I haven't. I haven't really been digging through the cards too much or anything. Gonna hurt when this is through. <laughs> Thanks, Elijah. Yeah, I should have just played the shock land there. Yeah. No I'm very scared of Domri giving like Ilhark haste and everything. Or Domri allowing them to cast that card. If I would have played the Steam Vents earlier, I would not have had to just keep that mountain. It looks like keeping that mountain is going to be okay. Looks like we're going to need a lot of land. Multiple Thorn Lieutenants. So three. One, two, three, four, five. 
I'd have to shock if I want to be able to go Chain Whirler plus Dragon plus Hold Up Lightning Strike. Maybe I just don't play the Chain Whirler. Okay. Can we get game three on the draw? We had a really good hand on the play there. Like the Chain Whirler for the Paradise Druid, all that kind of stuff. Um, not too confident about the game on the draw here. I'm having a good day, Whopper Stopper. Hope you are as well. Thanks, Coco. This isn't my favorite shirt that I'm wearing from like a fit perspective wise. Like the sleeves are a little, are like, they're like baggy. Um, but sitting down here in a chair doesn't look so bad, you know? Like it's, you know, it's a little bit of a baggy shirt. Can't really tell as much when you're sitting down. And yeah, like kind of looking over the screen, it does look pretty good. The shirt looks pretty good on the camera. Duels are for that Domri looks pretty cool. <laughs> Not to discuss me more yeah, that's a pretty cool looking Domri. That's that's maybe my favorite of the glass pane uh, one so far. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I can't really kill this Domri. Street urchins hit harder. Please not Ferox and fight. Please not Ferox and fight. Ugh. <sighs> Who are revel in devastation? Ferox is really tough to beat when you're just playing red cards. It's too big. It's fine. Do I even need to scry upkeep here? Can whirler. Oh, please, sir. 
Give me some more. Yeah, doesn't always work out how you want. <sighs> Sorry, I haven't been talking as much here. Just kind of thinking through how I'm going to be winning this, or if I can. Yeah, my plan here is, of course, like the Chain Whirler with Shock for the Ronis. I'm definitely telling my opponent that that's what I have, because I, I shocked in the Stomping Ground during my turn. Alright, Ronus goes away for a bit. Looks like it's coming back. No. Uh, yes, Jedidge. Uh, it would have been safer to. Uh, it would have been safer to wait and let the first strike damage happen first and then lightning strike. Down to six. Boom, 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 boom. All right, getting that out of the hand. We'll get that out of here. Which meta decks are the hardest to pilot at the moment to avoid at first? I'd, for a beginner, I'd probably say is it Phoenix? Would be like the that'd be like the first deck that I would would say there is a difficult deck to pilot. Um. We have eighteen. 
That's the first one that comes to mind. If I would have just attacked for 4, 14, 11... Yeah, I would have just had lethal this turn if I would have just attacked last turn for 4. But, yeah. And there we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dredge. Dredge Phoenix. That's that's much harder to pilot. I would not recommend that one. Um, GG's there. Your games. I got pretty fortunate. Our opponent flooded out really, really bad. Um I don't think I don't think Ronus was bad. I mean, I think, I think. Uh, I mean, our opponent just had you know like, you know, ten, twelve lands or whatever they had over there. Even after I blew one up with Star of Extinction, that's just all they had were just lands. You can't just like the the one Ronus, you know, ate a lot of things. You know, traded with a bunch of cards and stuff. But they, just, they were just drawing lands besides the Ronus. Okay, uh, so. Went um went three two with the deck and you know good good respectable finish after starting zero and two for sure uh yeah this this kind of deck you know like it's it's a little bit better to be playing against like the slower mid range decks like with your star of extinctions and everything the aggressive decks can be kind of rough at times but having a bunch of shocks coil strikes. For early creatures and then chain whirlers and phoenix do help do a good job of stabilizing the battlefield also same with crisis so uh you have some good tools there against aggro um this will be pretty nice i think the chandras will be a pretty nice upgrade to this deck uh the new ones from corset 2020 kind of move away from immortal sun move towards chandra and then the other thing that that m20 is getting is graph digger's cage is going to be really crud clutch sorry really clutch for these like red mid-range like this and grixis and stuff like that because as we saw at frenzy like when we played against mono red frenzy was a really big problem zelus thanks for that uh resub there thank you very much and so just being able to play graph digger's cage to shut down frenzy very efficiently just one mana get it out there that's something uh um that's something I'm be pretty interested in for sure. All right, so that's Mono Red Crisis. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed the deck. And please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. Uh, but thank you so much for watching, and I will see you for another video.